So I'm going to start with sharing this article, which I found a couple days ago, which made me really mad. <laughs> so, and it gave me a lot of spirit to like keep working and researching. So this is published by the NIH just really recently. When was it published? Um, oh, it was modified on February 13, 2020. So who knows when they originally wrote it, but it's basically saying that um, coronavirus has, is, cannot be treated or prevented with alternative medicine, just a blanket statement. And the only, um, the only thing that they cite in this entire short article is one study, that study is here, where they took traditional Chinese pharmaceutical medicines and tested them for contamination or false labeling, which is a very real thing. And there's a big problem in China with heavy metals and herbs and um, false labeling and stuff like that. That has nothing to do with coronavirus, like at all, at all. And it's the only thing they cite. Now, meanwhile, I'm just going to click on one tab I have open. I mean, this is just like one of the gazillion articles on, on PubMed, which is one of the major kind of collective sites of um, study. Ironically, it's also organized by the NIH, uh, the same body. And this is an article on uh, Sambucas. This is like a, a elderberry species that um, has been shown to be helpful in coronavirus. Right here, it says it. So this is what I decided to kind of put my emphasis into as I did research. It's like really finding the evidence that natural substances and practices do very much combat viruses in multiple ways. There are so many steps involved with, um, you know, when we contact a virus to like how it penetrates the cell and how it replicates. So different substances work in different ways. So that's kind of like the main thing that I want to, and I know I'm preaching to the choir if you're on this, on this, but at the same time, I want to give you, instead of just being like, you know, take this, take that, like I really want to give you evidence on the most important. Um, you know, most, most helpful things to use. Uh, but let's back it up a bit, and I'm just gonna start with some background on the coronavirus, and then we'll get more into um, ways to support your immune system. So, let's see. I, I tend to call it the coronavirus, which isn't really the most correct term. Coronavirus is a whole group of viruses which have been identified for about like 15 years now, and this new strain that started in Wuhan, China is called COVID-19. It's a strain that they identified in 2019. So a virus is not a bacteria which can infect you. Viruses are tiny bits of nucleic, nucleic acid that contain information and use your body cells to create more copies of themselves. So they do need a host in your you know, mucous membranes and your um, body fluids um, to live. The size of them is interesting. It's one nine hundredth the width of a human hair is how small these viruses are, although coronaviruses are actually on the larger side of viruses, apparently. They're called corona. Corona is also like another word for crown because they have a crown um, appearance um, and the little spikes of the crown are what penetrate your cell. I think I have a picture of that too I can show you. Here's what it looks like, kind of pretty. 
And I think I had another picture too, but it might have gotten buried. Here's another picture. So just a little bit more about it. Um, these group of viruses cause about 10% of cold-like illnesses, usually limited to the upper respiratory tract by your, own, your body's own fever is what's gonna limit it from spreading elsewhere. It was not deemed a serious human pathogen until 2003. Um, an example of that, I think this was when it started, this was the SARS outbreak in China, 770 deaths. Uh, with that outbreak. Cause of death is pulmonary edema caused by a cytokine storm. So cytokine is a, uh, an inflammatory agent. Inflammation is produced by your immune system like as a response to um, infection. So in, inflammation is a good thing until it becomes out of control, such as in a cytokine storm, and we're going to come back to that later. Some of the symptoms, it could be asymptomatic, could just be mild symptoms like some fatigue, sore throat, muscle aches, headaches, could be shortness of breath, fever and cough are two of the strong symptoms of COVID-19 may lead to pneumonia. So how does it spread? So de it definitely spreads through infected respiratory droplets from coughing and sneezing, or if someone's coughing into their hand and then touching something. Um, and then that, those droplets will need to get to your own mouth, nose, or eyes to be infected. So if it's brushing up against you know, your skin or your clothes, no, but it, it needs to go to your mouth, which is why uh, washing your hands and preventing touching your, your face is, is important. Uh, six feet is usually the distance. You've probably heard that, um, that, you know, a cough or a sneeze is going to spread or mucus you know, droplets are going to spread. But there is also what we've now, they're now calling community spread. So they're not sure, you know, people are getting sick and they, they don't know anyone in particular that had contact um, like with an infected person. So they think it's most contagious when you're most symptomatic but I think that's also not 100% not sure. The incubation period was thought to be, let me see, oh, I lost it, but I think it was two to 14 days, but they found a woman who was incubating for 19 days, so they are not totally sure about the incubation period, which you know is just another tricky factor when dealing with the flu because people can seem like they're not sick, but they are sick, or maybe they're just starting to get sick and they haven't been tested. The testing in the US has been super limited. So according to the CDC, it doesn't live long on surfaces, but there was one big study about uh, another coronavirus that found it lived on surfaces two to nine days, depending on the type of surface like wood, metal, cloth, and the humidity level. Um, it's, this is not gonna be transmitted by packages. Some people have asked about packages coming from China. It is killed by heat. It's also killed by a lot of different um, sanitizers, so that's good news. A little more background, how and when did it originate? So it was first reported in Wuhan, China in December, the first case in the US was identified January 21st. And this is, this is the part where I think things get interesting. So if there's a new strain, there's always like a, a source of it. And the source of this strain has not been identified yet. So many viruses that are kind of new strains are zootonic, they're transferred from animals. And in the case of Wuhan outbreak, a lot of the sick people were associated with a wholesale market, like a that sold, get this, uh, poultry, donkeys, sheep, pigs, camels, foxes, badgers, bamboo rats, hedgehogs, and reptiles. So a lot was going on there, but they did not find the virus being carried by any of these live animals. They did find some samples of it on, um, 
fish that were already like, you know, not live, like cut up or whatever. Um, but they didn't find it on any live animals. However, in January 2018, so only a year earlier, China opened a level four biosecurity lab close to this Wuhan fish market in Wuhan city. So it is possible that the new strain came from there. Um, they do work with primates and primates, you know, can, can scratch or not that we're saying it's transmitted by scratching, but there could have been some transmission to a human through that lab or through some kind of like sample that was, you know, accidentally carried out of the lab. So I think that's, that's quite possible. Uh, here is something that I read that I haven't read anywhere else. And I'll put the link to this in the article, but a uh, virus mutates, but a virus can also genetically recombine. And they have found evidence of genetic recombination of this COVID-19 strain. So this, let me try to read some of this, see if it makes this. So the existence of genetic recombination has the following impl implications. Two different COVID-19 strains, there are five strains within the COVID-19, should have co-infected the same cell. So that could happen. You could have, you could have two strains of the same st strain <laughs> connect in a cell and then they become a new thing. Also, a strain might um, acquire a new trait like extra virulence or drug susceptibility from other strains. So they can learn from each other if they're exposed to each other. Uh, also, the COVID-19 could become more adaptable to the human immune system and significantly strengthened through genetic recombination. So it sounds like it could be negatively affected or positively affected depending on the circumstances. Um, and then it said the accuracy of diagnosis based on blood and biological assays may be compromised. If, the, if it's changing in its genetics and we're looking for certain genes to identify it, um, then that could be a problem. So they're saying the transmission rate may look more, transmission tracking may more look like a network than a tree. Um, and that could also be misleading as we try to track this, this virus and transmission of it. Uh, so it's just interesting, you know, I'm not a virologist, like this is kind of new information for me, but I had, I had never read this um, anywhere else. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And I'll have that link for you guys when I make the blog. Um, so I see we've got a question about um, SIRS and mold and should you be worried. So that's kind of the next section we're getting into, which is what is your risk? So I'm going to talk a little more generally and then I'll talk about certain conditions. So on average, seasonal flu kills at a rate of 0.1%. The 1918 flu, which had a very high fertility rate worldwide, was 2%. And this was the back before people were flying around in airplanes all the time, and it still circled the world four times. That's pretty interesting to me. So it's pretty amazing how viruses can spread. It's probably more than just six feet of contact. I'm sure people were traveling at that time, but not the way we are now. That flu killed 50 million people worldwide. So that was a much different time for technology and all that kind of stuff. But the current death rate of COVID-19 is unknown, really. So some people are saying it's under 1% or quite low or up to 2%. Here's a little bit more about that. I'll give you in a sec. Um, also, the contamination rate with seasonal flu. When you have the flu, you're going to usually infect 1.3 other people. But right now with coronavirus, you usually infect 2.2 other people. So this, as we talk about like decisions, what to do next and stuff, I think this is pretty important because it does spread a little faster. So protecting yourself if you are sick and staying away from people who are compromised, I think is one of the biggest factors we need to talk about. 
so some people who are more susceptible are over 65. The highest death rate is over 80. And this is, you know, maybe going to change, but the Chinese CDC reported uh, just in February 17 um, that the death rate over 80 years was 14.8%. So that's really quite high. Um, and then if they didn't get the range, you know, in 60s and 70s, but under 50, um, it's pretty low. So 40 to 49 year olds, the rate is 0.4%. And 10 to 39 years, it's 0.2%. So again, really low. Um, children, no, there have been no deaths in children zero to nine years. Children seem to be handling this virus really well, which is great, but they're also great little carriers, right? They're always touching things. They're always touching their mouths. So that's one thing you have to think about with children. Um, so pre-existing medical conditions. Um, it says increased risk of death, but we'll talk more about what those include. Uh, without pre-existing conditions, mortality rate 0.9%. If you have a history of cardiovascular disease, the rate increased to 10.5%. So generally when modern, or not modern, like you know, conventional medicine is talking about pre-existing conditions, they're usually talking about things like um, heart disease, cancer, um, being on immune suppressant drugs, diabetes I think would be a, compliment, a complicating factor. Um, they're not as much talking about things like Lyme disease or mold toxicity or I think, I think autoimmunity has come up as a, as a factor, but usually, you know, they're talking about more severe things. So I don't think you're going to find as much on like these outlier, not to say they're outlier. Obviously I'm, I have SIRS too. I have a ton of medical history that, that I'm going to talk about in a second. I think if you're going to scope or scan like the internet for, you know, your risk with Hashimoto's, you're not going to probably find that much because they're talking about these bigger things like heart disease and diabetes and stuff like that. However, if you are in this community and you have autoimmunity, you have gut infections, you have... Uh, SIRS, I think that you are more susceptible to picking something up. I don't necessarily think you're more susceptible to like a fatality unless you're, you, unless you kind of know you are pretty compromised. So I, I guess I can't answer that question like for sure, but even me, like I have a really complicated medical history, um, but I also take really good care of myself. I think I'm more likely to pick something up in some ways, although I've been really boosting my immune system. Um, and I think I, I may be more symptomatic if I picked it up than other people. Um, but I don't think I would necessarily like be like fatal. I'm not like an elderly person, you know, like, like with, the, you know, when you're older, and this will be in the article, your immune system really comes down and function. Your thymus glands shrinks, the response of your immune system is less hardy. So I'm in my 40s, like my immune system is still pretty responsive. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into the ins and outs, but some things that I think could um, come in and factor in are dysbiosis, so an unhealthy gut, leaky gut, um, a high sugar diet, which hopefully nobody in this group is doing, but we all have our weaknesses. So if you're, if you're drinking regularly, if you're having just straight up white sugar treats sometimes, I would really cut that out right now. Um, lymph congestion is a factor. So if you have SIRS and you, you are lymph congested, um, which can happen because your body has more toxins than it can process, that can affect your immune response because your lymph system is part of the immune system. It does some of the communicating and the reacting. Um, history of, if you're smoking, that should have been another category, but smoking is a factor. Um, tissue adhesions can be a factor. I thought this was really interesting. So another reason your lymph could not move is because of tissue adhesions. So 
maybe if you've had surgery a few months ago and like you're still dealing with a lot of adhesions or you have, you know, muscle problems, pain, not to say like it's directly going to get you sick, but I would encourage you to work on getting massages and getting myofascial release, working on scars. We could, if anyone has questions about that, I have some information on that, but when things aren't moving, you things can collect and kind of um, get worse. Maybe not so much for the virus. Well, yes, it can be for the virus, but anytime you can have a block and lymph moving, it's not as good of a factor for your health. So something kind of, uh, you know, out of the box to consider doing is just getting massage and keeping healthy in that way. Um, so with autoimmunity, yeah, the, the immune system is kind of overreactive. So if you do have an autoimmune condition, I think you really want to shore up all your triggers and all your kind of background stuff for that because the way that, that um, coronavirus or COVID-19 usually becomes fatal is this overreaction. I don't know if it, maybe overreaction isn't the right word. This react, this inflammatory reaction that then kind of overwhelms the lungs and the body. So you don't want your immune system going completely crazy. Like you want it to get to the, you want it to like stop the virus or slow the virus sooner than that. So it really doesn't get severe. So if you're autoimmune, you know, often you have leaky gut. Um, let's see, what can I generalize here on immunity? Um, You may also have some lymph issues. Um, you may have sleep issues, and it's really important to get sleep. So even if you're using melatonin or something to sleep, I would say get a good night's sleep, get a really balanced diet, you know, manage stress, just manage any of your triggers. So I have some autoimmunity, but mine is actually pretty teeny tiny. Um, but I, what's been more active for me lately is Epstein-Barr virus. It's been a real pain in my ass lately because it's, I, you know, winter is a trigger for me. And then I did some airplane travel that was a really, I realized, and time changes was a big trigger for me. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, stress, um, sugar, caffeine, those things irritate it for me. I've just had a hard time getting a hold of it again. So I'm really just focusing, you know, on strengthening myself right now because it's a great reminder that I'm already carrying a virus and I want to manage it. That's why we have so much antiviral stuff in the store is because I've had to learn a lot about managing virus. Um, so I'm just working on that. And then somebody is talking about mold earlier when you especially if you're still a, 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 around mold you could have something called leaky lung um, and your lungs are just like more susceptible and kind of delicate so definitely if you're still around mold i'd like you to not be around it what right now um, especially like if coronavirus is like coming to your town and stuff I, i'm gonna this is sounding a little too scare tactic -y, but I'll just say that your chances of having leaky lung are higher if you're still exposed to mold toxins. So, you know, bear that in mind. Uh, and even when you've left it, you can tend to be a little more susceptible. Your immune system is still off. I've been out of mold for two and a half years now, but my body has now decided that springtime in Arizona is, is a threat and I get asthma. So this is my second year getting asthma before my virus has like left the that left the building. So I'm having virus stuff and asthma stuff at the same time, even as I like take good care of myself and do all these things. So I was supposed to go to a conference this past week in California. And at first I was totally gonna go and then things kind of kept changing and then I decided to drive instead of fly to reduce you know the, that exposure on on, on airplanes. Um, and then I, and then I decided not to go at all because, um, I didn't want to expose my parents. 
So if I went, it was a giant conference with tens of thousands of people from all over, right? So if I went and I got the virus and I didn't know it and I interacted with my parents, that could be literally fatal for them. So I wasn't comfortable with that. And I just wasn't feeling great. You know, when you're already going into a situation, not feeling that strong, it just didn't feel like a good decision. So I decided not to go. And then like literally the day before the event, they canceled the event. I think so many people were backing out that they just decided to, to cancel. So uh, I give that example to, I think things changed quickly. And you also have to make decisions like based on your own situation. So this wasn't like, you know, it was an event I was looking forward to for sure, but it wasn't like critical for me to go. Um, so I think it, it worked out well for me. Um, yeah. And if, if people want to ask specific questions later about why well, I have this, should I do this? I'm, I'm happy to answer. Um, so yeah, you can just write them and then I'll go back and uh, find them. Uh, just a little bit more as we talk about underlying health and immunity. So your immune system doesn't act alone. And that's something within the framework of functional medicine I really want to emphasize. We talked a little bit about the gut earlier and autoimmunity. Let me talk a bit more about that. So this is from the Neurohacker website. Um, the immune system and the gut microbiota developed a mutualistic relationship, regulate, regulating one another and cooperating to support each other. The importance of this interaction is clearly highlighted by the fact that 70 to 80 percent of the body's immune cells are found in the gut. So that's a little bit about the bacteria. I do have in our immune area of the shop this like healthy gut kit with probiotics and immunoglobulins. The immune system also has a supplement for pre prebiotic fiber, for a mucosa supplement. Um, because if you are feeling like, oh my God, it's just, I really need to address it, then why not now? You know, why not show up your gut now where most of the immune cells in your body are found? So one other little thing, your intestinal barrier is made up of physical and chemical ele elements. The physical barrier is created by the ep epithelial cells that line the gut, the molecules on their surface, and the mucus they produce. The chemical barrier is created by inflammatory molecules, cytokines, antibodies, and antimicrobial substances produced by the epithelial and immune cells. So that barrier is really important to you. It lets um, some things through, but you don't want to let too much stuff through. And you want to you, you want you to have your immune system make good decisions uh, about what to attack and not attack. Um, within the gut. Uh, I didn't bring it out here, but one of our products, Mega Mucosa, is quite good at rebuilding that mucosal layer. And this Mega IgG, you know, they're similar, they're like cousins. This can also help rebuild that layer and basically just give you some immune support directly in your gut. It's, it's attaching to viruses, it's attaching to antigens in your gut. So if you do feel like you're kind of weak in that area, this can be a nice support. Uh, so gut is one area to shore up, potentially. The liver is another. The liver has more to do with your immune system than you might think. So if you are dealing with chemical toxicity, heavy metals, uh, mold, and you feel like you're not detoxing as well as you should be, we'll talk more about it later, but like supporting with glutathione, support, supporting with broccoli sprouts. Um, supporting with your best diet to really let the liver do its job. So the liver actually produces acute immune proteins, kills antigen particles, clears waste particles, produces local inflammation, deletes activated T cells, and induces tolerance to ingested and self antigens. Here's one little quote. The liver is a major site of the extra, extra thymic T cell development, which assumes increasing significance with aging in mammals. Perturbations in hepatic structure or function can result in significant ramifications in both innate and adaptive immune system. So as your thymus gland shrinks with age, you need more T cells produced in your liver. And if you have issues with your liver structure or function, 
your immune system can be affected. So that's fatty liver disease, which I think about 50% of people have now, or that could be glutathione um, reduction from so much like toxicity, could be poor nutrition, um, could be just overwhelm of the liver by toxins. So castor oil packs, um, clean diet, sauna therapy, greens powder, we'll talk more about it, but there's some ways to support the liver. Briefly wanna mention the mouth. Um, we've been learning about the mouth this winter, right? It's, it's, it's also a bacterial environment. It's a first line of defense. We we're talking about viruses coming to the mouth, potentially from touching them. You actually, in your saliva, have antid antibodies to attack viral pathogens. So you want that mouth really healthy. You want to avoid medications that reduce saliva production. You want to just have like a good oral uh, microbiome. I have um, this toothpaste here. I put that on sale too for this immune sale and the mouthwash as well. So these, they don't kill good bacteria, they just kill bad bacteria, uh, and they just create a better balance, reduce plaque. What I really like to, and wanted to say about this mouthwash is it's liposomal, so it actually absorbs into your lymph. So if you, you know, are traveling or you think you may be infected or maybe you just you work around a lot of people, I would make sure you're doing this maybe even three times a day, like after work, morning and night, um, or like if you're on an airplane, because it's gonna actually have some antiviral effect into your uh, lymph, which is pretty cool. So it'll work in the mouth and also kind of absorb into your tissues in the mouth. Um, and lastly, I'll mention the mind and the immune system. Some posts I've seen on social media lately talk about you know, well, stress is bad for you, so don't stress out about the coronavirus. Well, stress is bad for you, but you should just be informed about the coronavirus and, you know, not be paranoid. Like, I had to make a decision about going to California. Now, if I had just said, oh, forget about it, I'm just going, well, first of all, it would have been canceled when I got there, so that's one good thing. And it just wasn't, you know, it wouldn't be responsible. Um, so, just in my family situation, I didn't think it was a good idea. Um, so there's a difference between panicking and being informed. So that's why you're here, right? To be informed. So I don't want to scare you. And if I say something that sounds too scary, um, you know, feel free to ask me and follow up with it. Okay, so what are some good lifestyle practices for immune support? So yes, you do want to clean surfaces. Um, you know, if you work at a school or you work around people, I would clean surfaces there within your home, you know, you, you probably just, you know, maybe a little, it might be a little more than your normal cleaning. I've been running diffusers uh, more often. Um, essential oils are, uh, many of them are antiviral. We'll talk more about that. Uh, and most disinfectants do kill um, the virus. So, uh, hydro hydrogen peroxide, alcohols. Um, I heard, I read one post that most sanitizer doesn't kill virus. That's not correct. So uh, a lot of things to kill the virus <laughs> on surfaces. It's, it's not that hard. If you do take an airplane, you want to wipe everything down except cloth. If something's made of fabric and you get it wet, it could actually kind of spread the virus. So you just want to wipe down hard surfaces. Um, and on an airplane, again, we'll talk more about remedies, but we talked about maybe doing the mouthwash. It's such a small, easy thing to bring. Uh, this nasal spray has been selling like hotcakes before I even talked about it. So this is super easy to use, you know, in an airport, on a plane, in the morning and evening, just to kind of kill some germs in your nose in a hurry. You can also do neti pot and saline wash. This is just like a little faster, right? A little, just easier to deal with. Um, you can also do oral silver spray. That's really easy, great for kids, right? Because it's not a pill. Um, we talked about doing massage potentially, just to kind of support your body's lymph movement. 
essential oils, there's a, you know, there's a bunch of them studied for antiviral effects, some that kind of, that I found very specific things about were eucalyptus, cinnamon, and rosemary. They actually did a study on this on guard blend um, showing effic efficacy against H1N1. I think that was the, the swine flu. Said it was effective against both viruses and bacteria and post influenza pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia. So I think that they're getting viral pneumonia with this coronavirus. Um, so a friend of mine, Jody Cohen, posted a nice article I'll share about essential oils. And one thing she said is it's better to use a blend because different oils have a different antiviral effect. Again, like the virus has a life cycle and different you know, ways it's working into us and growing. So diff to get combine is, is, go is a great idea. This is On Guard by doTERRA. You can diffuse it, you can put it in a spray. They make a hand sanitizer that I have in my car. Um, you can also just take it right out of the bottle and um, you know, have a little lick, rub it right on your hands, like on an airplane, it's totally fine. Um, so this has rosemary, orange, clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus. I think it's called Thieves Oil um, by Li Young Living. Um, this is their Breathe Oil. So it has a few of the same things, eucalyptus, uh, but it also has peppermint, lemon, cardamom, cinnamon, which we said was good, um, laurel leaf, which is kind of similar to eucalyptus. So it does open up your breathing passageways, but it also kills germs. So you can diffuse this like in kids' rooms at night. Something is spilling over here. <laughs> I don't know what. Um, and then this is one I wanted to mention that I've been really loving. It's called Purify Cleansing Blend. And it is kind of meant to be a cleaning product, but I've been diffusing it too. It smells a bit like Lysol, but I actually kind of like it because it just smells like, like it's killing stuff. So it has lemon, Siberian fir, citronella, lime, tea tree, and cilantro. I love this one. So you can mix um, like 30 drops with like a cup of water, a cup of vinegar to make a spray. Um, and if you, you know, you already have a few around the house, maybe read up on them, combine them. Um, lemon is really nice as like a bright, you know, base scent. Um, some other oils. That are good are Melissa, which is also an antiviral against Epstein Barr, oregano, star anise, which you can also make into a tea, thyme, peppermint, ginger, wormwood, which is also good for parasites, and frankincense. Uh, you can also, let's see, just Moving away from essential oils here, you can do a nebulizer. I actually don't like to do essential oils in a nebulizer. I think they're too strong. Um, a nebulizer you can buy on Amazon and you have this little mask over your, your nose. It's cheap and it blows steamed air into your lungs. What I would put in there is some silver, some colloidal silver. I think that the oils, you know, maybe to do just like once a week, maybe okay with like one drop but I wouldn't do oils every day in a nebulizer. It's too strong. So just diffuse them in a regular diffuser. Uh, if you buy a neb nebulizer, like someone in the family really has weak lungs, lung issues, um, you can look into getting a nebulizer, putting some silver into it. You can also do thymus thumping. A friend of mine suggested this, just to stimulate your thyroid or your thymus gland. I think that's a cool idea. Uh, some foods, I mean, you guys kind of already know you eat well, but really, really avoid sugars because of how they depress your immune system. This doesn't mean fruit. This means like, you know, bread and white sugar and alcohol, that kind of a thing. So some boosting foods, garlic is great, especially if you're willing to chew, chew a little raw. Uh, like if you're on a budget and you don't want to buy a bunch of supplements, you know, get some fresh garlic and chew a little half piece a couple times a day. 
um, berries, coconut oil, ginger, anything that has vitamin C, so peppers, citrus, olive oil has some good properties, um, green tea, St. John's wort tea, Tulsi tea are some tea options. All right, let me stop and take some questions. Yeah, Catherine, I am getting there. So I just mentioned coconut oil has monolorian. Um, that's a component of it. And then we're just about to get to uh, the supplement section, but you have a few supplements or things I didn't mention. CBD, uh, the black cumin seed, I don't think I'm covering. Oh, wow, in Europe, the On Guard is almost sold out. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, you can make your own with a few things. Um, I actually had just bought like an extra bottle of this recently. So we're all stocked up. Monk fruit, no, I think monk fruit's okay to use. I, the only thing I say about all the sugar alcohols and alternative sweeteners is um, even if they're natural, like if you're having a sweet taste, all day every day because you love sweets that still is confusing for your body and kind of seems like sugar in some ways it may not spike your blood sugar as much but it's a little confusing for your sugar handling so i don't really think like monk fruit would be bad for your immune system um, but in general i would say that just you know don't overdo it with sweeteners or like some people will like go crazy with cooking their own like um how you say their own like homemade natural sweets stuff like breads and stuff and it gets overboard laura is saying she is concerned about shortages of supplies yeah i had a section on that and then i thought oh maybe people are interested but yeah i think actually i actually you know i don't think we're going to be dropping like flies from this virus, but it, it you know, it, it's just a little unknown. And I think the biggest disruption will be um, with our routines. I think there's going to be quarantines and things being sold out and yeah, later things not being available. And if we can't buy things because they're not available, that affects our economy. I think people in the service industry could be affected uh, if people aren't going out. Um, you know, most of this hasn't really hit, like it really hasn't hit where I am in Arizona, but you know, some of this is already hitting in California and Washington. They're already, they're already, you know, things are sold out and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's going to cause some economic disruption and stress from that reason, to be honest. So being maybe more mindful about saving money and having you know, having a savings so that um, if the economy gets weird, that, you know, the more, I guess that's just a good life advice <laughs> anyways, um, uh, you know, because some, it could be hard. When I used to have my clinic in Portland, if there was a snowstorm, the city was not equipped to deal with it. So we would be closed like five days. I think one day, one time we were closed like seven days. And that was really hard on us financially. Like we were just getting by and to lose a week of income was very disruptive. So, you know, it's, it might be hard to say like, we'll get ready and save a bunch of money, but just consider that whatever industry you're in and how it could be affected. Um, Talia asks, how do you know if your lymph is congested other than having tissue adhesions? Good question. Um, puffy eyes, puffy face, swollen glands, sore groin area, puffy ankles, um, or just even feeling kind of like, ugh. like if you have Epstein-Barr or mold toxins or uh, Lyme, often you just, things just aren't like moving. A lot of it is in your gut too. A lot of limb congestion can be in your gut. So maybe even feeling kind of enlarged there so you can do castor oil packs um you can do like lemon essential oils you can just 
may, I should probably make some more information about that. Somebody asked, can I describe my EBV symptoms? Her levels show high, but she can't find any symptoms and she feels fine. Uh, that's a great question too. So my symptoms are not the same as everyone. Some people just feel fatigued. Um, I, I'm very viral -y. My My glands will be swollen. I get a sore throat all the time. I have trouble with like body temperature regulation. I'll have chills at night. Uh, and then sometimes I'll be very fatigued if I'm in a bad flare up. Um, so yeah, some people are just like kind of like fatigue or it could be that like you're not healing from other things. So I would, in, if you want to, we just started to offer EBV testing this month, but we always offer a past labs review. So if you've had testing and you feel like you don't know what to make of it, we can review it. So there is high because you've been exposed in the past and then there's high like you're flared up or high like you have higher numbers than you should and it's all kind of hard to understand <laughs> so so it could be that you're not as high as you think also but if you feel fine that's good but it makes me wonder why you even tested you must be something going on that you didn't feel fine the mouthwash is uh, called Dental Sidon LS, and we sell it on our shop. I'll, I'll show you later. We're just about to get in the supplement section of this thing, so it's going to be a big section. Um, Petra, we did talk about how long the virus lives on surface earlier. The CDC says it's not very long, but some past coronavirus has been studied and shown to live two to nine days on surfaces. Potentially, I, I wouldn't worry about something nine days old as much as just when you're in public and touching things, you know, I wash hands or spray down hands afterwards. Because um, I think that that's not super well known how long it, it lives on surfaces. The silver spray that we use is by Results RNA. This is the large size, we sell the smaller size. And this is you know, really nice for, again, like children or people who don't take pills because it's just a spray. It's not gonna turn you blue. It's really concentrated. You can take six, two times a day for maintenance or 12, two times a day, or even maybe three times a day if you're actually sick. Um, Catherine says, prior to using Megadose IV vitamin C, my provider had me on G6PD, I don't know what that one is, an RBC blood test to rule out anemia. Oh, okay, so you're saying you wanted, if people are gonna maybe be getting vitamin C IV that they should test for some things first. I guess I'm not really understanding that. If you want to explain that more, Catherine. Um, so if you write in the chat box, try to select all panelists and attendees so everyone can see it. That's sort of my preferred place for you to write a question to because um, then everyone can see it and read it rather than the Q&A area. But it's okay if you do Q&A. I know it can be confusing, but I prefer if you put it in the chat. Okay, so moving on to supplements. Um, this is another quote I read just from like this random blog I found. There are very few treatments, allopathic or natural, that can kill a virus outright as usually a virus must run its course. So there's some truth to that. You know, if you go to the doctor just normally and you're not feeling well, they might say, it's a virus, you just have to let it run its course, right? We've like all heard that. There are like a couple medications, but I think they have to catch it kind of early and there's some side effects. So there isn't like a lot they do really. But in doing some research, there are 
definitely nutraceuticals that can shorten the course and, and encourage prevention. Or, you know, maybe you're catching something, but you're, you're killing it off so early, you really don't even have symptoms. So there is still a lot of possibility there. Uh, let's see. You know, I think just so we have a visual here, I'm gonna show you our shop and then I'll read you some notes. There's some things that are not in our shop that are helpful that I'll mention, but frankly, a lot of it is in our shop. So I might as well show you. And we can, if you have questions about dosage or anything, you can ask. So Catherine says, if you're going to get IV vitamin C, you have to have this G6PD test. What does that stand for, Catherine? Whoops, that's not what I want. Okay, so here's our shop. And I just made this new page called Immunity. So everything's kind of in one spot. This is a nasal spray we talked about. It has colloidal silver or nano silver, but it also has like a, a couple few little herbs. Um, chamomile, echinacea, rose hips, and barrage leaf. It's pretty cheap as you can see. Uh, and let me read you a little bit of notes about colloidal silver. We did a whole article on it, and it's definitely one of those ones that the NIH would probably say it doesn't do anything, but there's actually tons of research on it. Colloidal silver is a suspension of pure metallic silver in water, and it, it works by interfering with the enzymes that allow a virus to utilize oxygen, thus in essence suffocating it so it cannot do damage in the body. So that's one of the mechanisms. Usually there's several mechanisms to all these things. Whoops. Well, now you're seeing mine. Let me go back to you. Okay. I guess you're going to see my messy notes. <laughs> so the silver spray, uh, I don't think it has any extra ingredients. No, just silver. It's 350 micrograms for 12 sprays, which from my research is pretty high. But again, it's still not going to turn you blue. It's, that's not the type of silver it is. This is the antiviral kit I put on the market probably about a year ago. I'm not sure. So it has the silver nasal spray, vitamin D, which we'll talk about in a minute, and olive leaf, which yeah, we might as well go talk about right now. Uh, vitamin D does a lot of different things. Um, vitamin D receptors are on B cells, T cells, antigen receptors, presenting cells. So just they're critical to a lot of cells uh, function that modulate the immune system. We have a whole blog on it, uh, lots of information on it. Olive leaf is a pretty cool thing. Uh, I think it, I think you guys really enjoyed learning about it this winter. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's antiviral, antibacterial. It's good for like uh, stomach flus. Um, yeah, it can go for like diarrhea, but it's antiviral as well. It is, has had some studies done for it with Epstein-Barr. Here's a little thing about um, respiratory viruses and flu viruses. I don't know if I have olive leaf here, but it kind of looks like this. Um, you can do two twice a day if you're dealing with Epstein-Barr or, um, I don't see. If you're just kind of maintaining and like you're okay, I would do two a day. If you feel like you're compromised, you're in an Epstein bar flare up, um, I would do two twice a day. Or if you feel you've been exposed to something, I would do two twice a day. If you're actively sick, I would do two three times a day. I will tell you, it could potentially cause a little bloating or rumbly stomach because it is antibacterial. So sometimes it's killing some bugs in your gut, bad bugs, and you're getting a little rumbling from it. Um, 
yeah, I think there's more I can tell you, but you can ask if you have anything. So this daily D is 5,000 IU, which is a good maintenance dose. If you know that you're low, I usually have people take four a day for a month or even six weeks, depending on how low they are. But one a day is just good maintenance this time of year with the viruses around. Uh, this is a new, oh yeah, they fixed it already. This is a new kit we have out, it just came out. It has broccoli seed and sprout. We have a blog coming up about it. Broccoli seed and sprout, amazing. Amazing for your liver, detoxes gasoline additive, supports phase one and phase two liver detox, supports estrogen detox. It's only, you only need one a day. It lasts three months. The detox greens, it's almost all organic, except for like a little of the flavoring. Um, has enzymes, it's just a nice way to give your body the greens it needs. An alkaline environment is not favorable for a virus. So lemon water, greens, good ideas. So this kit is a three month supply. Uh, we talked about the toothpaste. Yeah, I don't think we need to talk about that again. The detox kit I put in here because dry brushing moves lymph. We have a binder. So if you are having some die off or you're treating your gut, like a binder is just a nice thing to have on hand if you've got an upset stomach or you took too many herbs and you're feeling weird. It, it kind of helps clean all that up. And then lastly, it has a glutathione spray. Glutathione also has benefit directly to the immune system. Let me go find that. Mm. Huh. Well, this is saying that broccoli sprouts support glutathione, but I also, I don't know where it is, but there's, I found some research on glutathione it must be in here, I don't know where it is. Um, glutathione promoting activity of immune cells and um, like what do they call it, phagocytosis, like killing of damaged cells increases with glutathione. So here's another link as we talk about what if I have mold, what if I have Epstein-Barr, what if I have toxins. If your glutathione is depleted, your immune system will probably also be depleted. So one way to support your detoxification and also your immune system is to take glutathione. Similar dose to the silver, six twice a day is kind of low dose, 12 twice a day is higher dose, but it's very dose dependent. Some people feel better on glutathione, some people feel worse, some people feel nothing. So if you can only do one spray a day, so be it. Dry brush by itself. I love that our dry brush set, it's like, it's very complete. You know, it helps you if you're just getting started. It has a mini brush for your face and your neck and your armpits and stuff. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, but our spore based probiotic will help potentially promote 80 different strains of friendly bacteria it will starve unfriendly bacteria because it's these bacillus strains read the environment. Again, usual dose two a day. You could high dose four a day if, if it's a fit for you, if you've maybe been on antibiotics. If you can only take a quarter pill a day because anything else gets you bloated, that's because you're having a lot of die off and you have a lot of dysbiosis. So I'm not trying to say this makes you sick, but some people can only handle a little bit. You don't, you don't know until you, you know, it depends on your own history. And I love this product. It can be a little constipating. So the dosage on the bottle is four, but if you only want to do two, that's okay. And I find taking it earlier in the day um, makes it less constipating. I think it's a little constipating for potentially two reasons. It binds to viruses and stuff and helps them like be pooped out. So I think it could kind of bulk up your stool. And the other reason I think it's because it's one reason that we move, especially if we have like IBSD diarrhea style, is because I think there's so much irritation in our gut that we move our bowels to expel it. So when there's less irritation, sometimes things slow down. And I don't think it's permanent, but it's just a change. So just something to know. But these are two of my favorite products, and they're our best-selling products in the shop. When, 
I made a coupon code for you guys. Let me go put it. It's Corona 10. So it, it's good for anything in this category. So if you've been wanting to try this and you know your gut's not exactly what you'd like it to be, these would be two great products to start with. They'll last a month at a full dose or longer if you're kind of just taking it easy and low dosing. This is actually our hormone kit, but uh, as you'll learn, so I'll share a few things. Magnesium and fish oil are dynamite for your immune system. They're amazing for inflammation. These two products, like to me, are just so key. Um, I don't have, oh, I have the fish oil handy. So I do like the liquid because you can get in such a, a good quantity of it. Um, multivitamins obviously going to have some of the micronutrients you need for your immune system, like vitamin A. Uh, let me read you about fish oil and magnesium, though. Okay, this is a pretty small study, but this study, they gave fish oil supplementation for two months. The phagocytic capacity of the neutrophils in the blood was increased with 62%. That's pretty high. That's a big response. Uh, here's another one. They effectively absorb to the cell membrane. So a lot of things that are important in our body are cellular communication. So they deflame the cell membrane and they have bound to decrease gene expression of cytokines in macrophages. Um, and this is just another fat, fatty acid. So we've talked a little bit about that cytokine storm that can happen. So, you know, the immune system producing cytokines, how you don't, you don't want it to get overdone. I think consider lowering inflammation in your gut with fish oil and magnesium. Just keep inflammation down. If, if you're already, if, frankly, if you're like me, like I'm already having inflamed lungs from asthma and my history of mold and stuff. Also, I'm perimenopausal, which makes you more susceptible to asthma. And I live in like the fifth most polluted <laughs> city in the country. So I'm, I'm having some susceptibility. So I really need to keep my inflammation down. So if, if you are concerned about inflammation in your own body with your own history, I would really go fish oil and magnesium. Magnesium, no one even talks about for the immune system. And it's so good. Ours is a powder. It's super absorbable. I'm actually challenging myself to do two doses a day, which is 600 milligrams, because that's usually what we need. It's actually good for asthma. I just found that out yesterday, probably because of the inflammation, but it also does other things too. So here's a few things it does. Um, So your thymus shrinks faster if you're deficient in magnesium and your spleen produces less macrophages if you're deficient in magnesium. Also it's needed for cellular energy and pushing things in and out of a cell. So that's important when you're trying to clear a virus or detox the cell, right? This is very interesting that I found. Um, I found a lot of magnesium here. If you have low magnesium levels, you often have higher Epstein-Barr levels. And if you have this genetic magnetic, magnetic, genetic magnesium transporter gene issue, that can also mean low magnesium and higher Epstein-Barr levels. And supplementing with magnesium helps lower the Epstein-Barr levels. I just randomly found this. It's just so amazing. So this is pretty some pretty cool information. Um, and it's, you know, we're, we're supposed to be talking about coronavirus, but I think it's, it's similar. We just talked about some of the um, benefits of magnesium to the overall immune function. So super interesting there. So if you've never, I personally feel like I could take magnesium all day and I'm just, sometimes I'm lazy and I don't. But my body really likes it. So this was encouraging to me to, you know, do more of it. Uh, all of what we talked about, this is a brand new product I put in the shop for this webinar. So it's just 
got in there just now. Uh, it's a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and a very available quercetin. So vitamin C, quercetin, both very potent for the immune system. Quercetin especially has found some findings for coronavirus. The caveat is you cannot low dose. So Catherine was talking about taking an IV. Not all of us are gonna get IV vitamin C, although it's great. Um, liposomal vitamin C is probably a strong option. It's just more expensive and this had the quercetin and you're gonna get vitamin C from oral supplementation as well. So the important thing is the dosage. Just taking one of these a day isn't even enough really for prevention. So you really have to take three a day, two or three a day uh, for prevention. I know that's kind of like a bummer, but, um, and then if you're sick, you, you, they encourage you to take one per hour for six hours and then three a day. And that really can shorten the duration of a virus. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, let me see if I can find your quercetin. Quercetin, I think it has a lot of mechanisms. So I just picked out a few. Um, they infected like mice with flu virus, then gave them quercetin in some form, I don't know how, and then did some um, like genetic analysis and found a reduction. I don't have the graphic here. I just found this in the same article. Curcumin is also um, well known for like antiviral vitamin C. I know I have some vitamin C information here. Yeah, this was symptoms decreased by 85% doing that same dose as I told you, six every six and for one hour every six hours and then three a day. So that's pretty strong. Vitamin C is another one that does a lot of different things for the immune system. Here's the thing saying how it was insufficient. So this was a thousand milligrams was insufficient for prevention. So that's pretty interesting, you know, because we could all say, well, vitamin C is good for flu. But how much, like, you know, it's very specific. Stimulates T cell proliferation, et cetera, et cetera. Fish oil we talked about. We've talked about this. I think I might take this one out of the thing, but this one is a good kit to do, like, if you've been on. Um, antibiotics potentially, but I, I might take it out because I think it's not, wouldn't be my first choice. Um, mega mucosa, we talked a little bit about for rebuilding that mucosa, mucosa, mucosa layer of your gut. It's very soothing. So if you find you're sensitive to a lot of foods and you can kind of feel things pass through you, it's really nice. It's just one scoop a day. It doesn't taste the best. Um, mega prebiotic is going to feed those friendly bacteria. So if you're concerned about your dysbiosis, this could be a good product. It can irritate bloating potentially, even though it's not supposed to. So you might want to do a really small dose. You're supposed to take it over the course of a day, all day long. You sip it. Um, Biocidin. I thought I brought that over. This is nice, a nice thing to have on hand um, because it's a antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, like super tincture. So you could bring it with you when traveling because it's small, can be used for kids. Again, it may make your stomach rumble a little bit because you're gonna have maybe some die off, especially at a higher dose. So you just take your binder with it or use a lower dose. But if you're really sick, I would be doing a high dose. Broccoli sprouts we talked about a little bit for the liver support. This is a mouthwash we talked about. The greens we talked about. I'm super excited about this. This is a brand new product for us. 
and just a nice like daily foundational support. You know, doing your greens, your fish oil, your magnesium, your multivitamin, your broccoli sprouts, like that little combo of five things is quite strong. Uh, our multivitamin is a little low in uh, vitamin D, so that's why we carry this extra vitamin D. You're usually not gonna get enough vitamin D in a multi. So this one is 5,000. I put enzymes in here because I think not enough people are taking enzymes at all. They're so supportive of you so that you're not having dysbiosis, which is helping break down your food so that when it hits your gut, it's broken down and your body can absorb it better. You'll have less um, bacterial breakdown of food. Um, you'll be getting more nutrients. It just takes a lot of stress off your body because as we age, we make less enzymes. If you have Hashimoto's or some other conditions, you may not digest as well. If you're eating on the run, if you're eating at restaurants, if you're eating processed food. So I also think uh, taking enzymes is a really great way to just support your body all around and just you know, keep it strong. And oh, only one thing on the last page, EGCG. Oh, that's a really good one. So this is a compound from green tea. And as I went down the rabbit hole of immune support, green tea, this is not the same compound, but green tea contains caffeic acid, which is in a lot of those herbs that are antiviral. It's also in coffee, potatoes, tomatoes, berries, I think. Uh, green coffee beans. A caffeic acid turns into cholergic acid, something like that, that is antiviral. So this kind of, that's maybe kind of a side story. Let me tell you more about EGCG. I really enjoy it for um, Epstein-Barr. It's very well tolerated. It just kind of makes me feel stronger. So similar dose, I'd say like you could just do two a day as like a little maintenance, or you could do two twice a day if you feel like you know, you're know you under attack or things are more up for you. Been found to be effective on the influenza virus. Um, this is one way that it works. Exerted agglutination effects on virons and prevented the virus from absorbing onto the cell surface. So it's basically becoming sticky onto the virus particle so it can't get into the cell. Amazing. So there's all little, this is why it's good to take different things because there's little different ways that, um, I'm probably looking in the wrong place because I'm looking, my, my video's over there. Um, there's good to like take a variety of things, variety of oils because everything's working a little differently. So here's those cholergic, colored, Cholerogenic compounds I told you about. And here's some of the sources of them. It's pretty kind of interesting. I, a lot of times when they make you know viral medications, they're basing it on things in nature, right? Things like this. Okay, I think that's all that I've got there. Uh, I'll get in also mention to I mentioned earlier the elderberry. The actual study on coronavirus was done from not the elderberry that we have here in our local store, like a different variety of elderberry, but I think that elderberry extract is still a good general, a good like well-proven antiviral. So if you have that, you know, you could be using that as well. I probably need to do a little more information, do a study on that. Um, Petra, when you said, does it help for allergies, which thing do you mean? Okay, so Catherine's saying there, you can see in the notes here that there is an enzyme, genetic defects has something to do with maybe not being able to do high dose vitamin C that you have to test first. I don't know a whole bunch of IVs, I think I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, Liz takes natural calm for calm constipation. Should she take this one also? Yeah, they're, they're two quite different compounds. So this, I'm pretty sure natural calm is magnesium citrate, which helps mostly move your bowels. But this is, um, where is it? It's a chelated, um, 
magnesium glycinate. So it's more for absorbing into the cells and being used. Vitamin C in the quercetin. So I would say per, for prevention, two or three times a day, like one pill two to three times a day. Uh, and then if you have, you're already sick, it's six, I'm oh, sorry, it's one an hour for six hours and then one three times a day. Or you, I think the second day you could go a little higher too. One an hour for six hours may or may not give you loose stool. It's not the end of the world though. It's just your body's trying to clear too much. It probably won't happen, but it, it might. <laughs> so if you've taken four and you're like, I'm done, that's okay. You could wait and take some more later. Um, this is uh, a thousand milligrams. I read somewhere, I don't know where I read this a long time ago, that we can only really absorb 500 milligrams at a time. I think that could be true, but some of the flushing you get from it is still good for like detox. And it's just water soluble, so taking a little extra doesn't necessarily hurt. It's 15 milligrams of bioquercetin, but they claim it's like 40 times more absorbable than other quercetin. And it's like only $12, so it's just a really good price point. Um, by the way, let me put the coupon code in the... So Corona 10 is the coupon code for that whole immune category. I'll probably leave it up this whole month, that coupon code. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend waiting to the end of the month. I regularly really like, rec if you are attracted to something, just get it and have it in your medicine cabinet. You know, it's not going to go bad for a long time. It, even if Corona never comes to your town, it's not a bad idea to strengthen your immune system and have things on hand, right? Yeah, Catherine, if you need the vitamin C, you could just be sucking it up. That's kind of how I am with magnesium, I think. Beta glucans. Yeah, I, I wish I knew more about it, Liz. Maybe I should study up, but I've, I've heard good things about it, and I just don't know a lot about it, to be completely honest. Why is rosemary good for healing? Johanna asked. Um, I mean, I've used the essential oil the most. You can use it topically, but maybe use it in a capsule. Um, I don't know if I've seen it in a tincture, but it is good for the immune system. It's also good for detox, but I obviously doing research on the immune system right now. So here's the thing about it. Um, about it being antiviral, antibacterial. Can you see my screen? Oh, you probably can't see my screen anymore. Um, antiviral, antibacterial. I think there's some more information somewhere in here about it. And I'm not exactly sure the mechanism why it's good for detox. All essential oils are high in antioxidants, which is good for detox, but I, I don't know if it also kind of opens up the kidney pathway or it's definitely supportive of the liver directly. Maybe it just helps prevent like that damage to the liver that we talked about earlier. Um, what else was I gonna say? Juniper berry definitely opens up like kidney and all the lymph paths, pathways. So, you know, if you use the sauna, you can use some oils like on your liver, your belly. If you do a castor oil, you could use a little oils. Cinnamon is a hot oil. So be careful with that one. You definitely want to dilute that one. Yeah, we're just wrapping up, Charles, and I am recording this. So we'll put it out. I wanted to put it out when I had the blog ready, but I don't know how fast that will happen. So we will share it. Uh, and then I will try to have some written material so that you can, I know that this was like, um, you know, a lot of information. So I'd like for you to have, um, you know, written links so that you can get back to things. So yeah, we'll have that out 
Um, I'll talk to my manager. I would say we'll have at least the recording to you by Monday. Thanks, Charles. Thanks for coming. Cytokine storm. Can building up your immunity be too much of like too much? No, I don't. I don't think so. I guess I can do more research into like preventing the cytokine storm, which I think they're doing in, you know, conventional medicine right now as well. But I would just say lower inflammation in your body. Um, so how can I? Yeah, I, I think the magnesium and the fish oil are, are good ideas if you're inflamed and just to work on underlying conditions that are creating inflammation for you, whether it's like food sensitivities or, um, uh, I'm sorry, I got brain fog, um, you know, I like asthma, like I was talking about and gut health, uh, whatever it is, I would just be working on like everything sugar addiction, alcohol, or just lower information. Make your body like less reactive and more neutral. Get a good night's sleep. Um, so that, uh, again, like in our age group, probably you're not gonna like have a cytokine storm leading to, to death. Um, but I don't, you know, like I'm trying to think like how can I make my lung tissue, you know, stronger and how can I just like, even things out now to prevent that later. Thank you, Iris. The hand sanitizer. Yeah, let me show you. I really like the hand sanitizer, actually. Um, oops, hold on one second. Okay, here we go. So I, the brand I use of essential oils is doTERRA. They're really high quality, clean oils. They are sourced all over the world, so you won't see them as organic, but they do a ton of internal testing and documentation about it. I just toured their sandalwood farm in Hawaii. It was like completely amazing. So uh, I, I really like the company. You know, the downside is like the website isn't always the easiest to deal with and stuff. So this is my doTERRA kind of website, you could say. So there's two ways to buy from doTERRA. One is you can just buy retail and the other is you can become a wholesale member and it costs $35 the first time you become a member, but then everything's 25% off. So this involves filling out a little form with your information. So I'm going to skip that and just go to shopping. And kind of the easiest thing to do is just the search bar. So I don't know what that hand sanitizer is called. So I'm just going to put in on guard. Here it is. It's the sanitizing mist. So it's not that expensive retail, but it is cheaper wholesale and it's gonna last a long time. Um, another mouthwash that's dynamite is their On Guard mouthwash. I love it. Um, that's here. This is just a pure oil. This is like mixed with carrier oil, so it's a little cheaper. There's an internal supplement you can take. It's out of stock, so I think we know why that is. Um, there's a little tiny beadlet you can put in your mouth, hand wash, toothpaste. Um, just to show some of the other ones I mentioned, here's the Breathe oil, but it also comes in some other products as well. And then I'll show you, I mean, there's a lot of products in here, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. I love this Purify for cleaning. So I think one recipe could be one cup of water, one cup of vinegar, 30 drops of Purify. So you'll probably find more recipes online. So $20 wholesale, it's, it's not that bad. Eucalyptus was mentioned on its own as being antiviral. Cinnamon, again, is a hot oil. 
so be careful. Xenocrine is their um, detox oil, which is really, really nice. You can use that with sauna and castor oil pack, liver support. Any other questions about that? Catherine shared a link about protocols. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on everybody. I've been having such a good time like researching this and I was just like, oh, I really hope that people will, you know, be around and like learn with me. And I think like the biggest, one of the most important things about our community is like we're getting deeper into the information. So when you're talking to your family and your coworkers, you can give them like stronger information than they're getting some other places. And instead of like spreading rumors, we're going to be spreading some good information. I've done a lot of research on all these things, so I'm not just saying it. So I really want to just keep finding citations so you know like, like the thing with the vitamin C dosage, right? Like I could have just made something up, but we, I actually happen to find some really good information on dosing. So. I will keep at it and we will keep you posted as like the virus, um, you know, things change. We'll, um, hey, you're welcome, Liz. We'll keep um, sharing. I'd love for you to try some of our supplements and see what you think. It sounds like some people here do have mold toxicity, do have Epstein-Barr, et cetera. And these are all things I use, 100% of it. Uh, I will not sell it unless I'm happy with it. Even this one we just added, I already finished a bottle of it. So, you know, everything, I didn't just buy it this week. I, it was in our member box uh, this, this fall. Um, everything is like just super high quality. It's, it's not the same kind of quality you're gonna find at Costco. It's, we're, we really like do the research and we have relationships with the companies. So um, we'd love for you to try and share your feedback on on what's working for you and what you like. And maybe we'll do another one of these uh, in a few weeks as needed. All right, thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it.